Well, hello everybody. What we have today is a dripping faucet. This brand is a Moen and it's, I think it's called sometimes a Roman style or just a two-handled style. There are cartridges inside here and when those cartridges go bad, that's when you can get sort of a drip or a leak sometimes. So what we're going to need to do today is we'll start with the cold because that's one, the one that I think is leaking and we'll disassemble this and uh, then we'll pull the cartridge out and replace it with a new one, reassemble it. Hopefully that will take care of the problem for us. So let me move you over to this side where you have a little bit better light and can get a little bit closer. And we'll start with this assembly. All right, hopefully this won't be too bright of light. It's kind of looking a little washed out, but um, I've already loosened this up a little bit. This ring here is just a decorative ring. It doesn't really do anything. Uh, and then this will just screw off here and it comes off like that. Uh, can we see inside there? You'll see there's a screw. If you wanted to disassemble this, you could. You don't really need to. You have a stem here and that's what's going to turn your water on down below. And then you just have a retainer nut and this will come off. We'll put this stuff aside. And then you've got an O-ring here on this little plastic stem. And uh, again, this is just the decoration. So what we need to do is, first thing I'll need to do actually, uh, I know that this stuff here, there is a screw, a Phillips head screw that's down inside. And what I need to do before I do further disassembly is to go outside and I'll turn off the water. This is the main water pipe coming into the house and they will have generally a shutoff valve here. And when you see the handle going up and down, think of that as the, the way that the water is going to flow. So if you turn it off here like that, think of that as it's blocking off the water for you. So the next thing I need to do is take a Phillips head screwdriver and down inside of here is a Phillips head and we'll get that slotted in and then we'll unscrew it. So now I need to get this piece right here out. And Moen makes a tool and it you can get it off of Amazon for around I think five or six dollars, something like that. And you just put that in here and then you'll twist that thing off. Alright, so we've got all the other stuff off and this piece here should just unscrew almost by hand but I think it's been about almost 20 years since this has even been ever looked at. So I've had to resort to just using some channel locks and it's coming out um, but man, it is a bear and I don't know, I think what this part goes into is actually metal. And I may have to get a replacement part for this thing as well, I don't know. Uh, but it is in there tight. What we're going to talk about today is changing out the cartridge. This is the one I've already actually got out on a Moen style, Roman tub style. And that means you're going to have a separate faucet for your cold and then one for the hot. Because the uh, 
faucet is so old, I have had just nothing but trouble. Uh, just sort of problem after problem, obstacle after obstacle. And one of the main reasons I had so much difficulty in getting this thing out was that we are the original owners of the house and we've been here about 20 years. The faucet here developed a drip. And what I may do, maybe picture in picture or something in here, is I'll put some footage in of some of the struggles that I had to get this thing out. This is a retainer nut. And the way that the cartridge sits in is you've got your pipe here that goes all the way down. The cartridge is pushed down in and then you have the retainer nut that goes over and holds it down like that. And then on top of that, this comes in and goes in. And then you have uh, the stem and other things so that you can, when you go to turn the handle, it allows you to open that up. Moen basically recommends that once you sort of get to this point here, that you just go ahead and pull the cartridge. You just pull it straight up. Just use a pair of pliers. You can get um, a cartridge puller, which is one of these guys. I got this uh, from Home Depot, I think, and it's the uh, Danco version. Moen says uh, when I spoke with him on the phone that this works just fine, but unfortunately it doesn't work for this. It's mainly for uh, bathroom sinks and uh, depending if you have uh, on the shower, which I will be doing another video because we, we've developed a couple links. So I'll be doing a bathroom sink and I'll also do a, uh, a shower that has just a single handle. And that's what that tool that you just saw is good for. So anyway, if you are the original owners of a house, Moen will go ahead and send you out all the stuff that you need for free. And I think if you're within maybe five years of stuff that you've bought, if you're not the original owner, they'll go ahead and they'll back you up as well on that. I, I think. I'm not 100% sure on that. But anyway, in taking this thing out, it's plastic and the pipe inside is copper. And you use this particular tool that has these little lugs on it. And we'll use it on, we'll show you on the replacement thing because it'll look a little be able to tell a little easier and it just slots in like that and that's what you use to to screw it in and then to screw it out well there had been so much uh, buildup over the years because of the hard water that by the time i got it out it it only got to a certain point and i couldn't really turn it anymore with the tool and i ended up having to cut it to get the thing out. Uh, sort of the same thing with this. I, you could probably reuse this. I had to try and put some lubrication and stuff on there to, just to get it to come out and I finally was able to do that. Once these two things are out, so normally this uh, sits down in here and I'll show you on the, the reinstall how that goes in. Uh, this would go in first and again sit on the cartridge and that keeps it pushed down and seated into the pipe. Right now, I don't have that in, but I, I needed to just sort of get the cartridge in. This is the old one and it does have a hole here. And then when you turn the handle, that is what, if you guys are we're still on camera here, that is what opens that and closes it. And that needs to face, this opening here needs to face the faucet so that when you put the new cartridge in, it has to go down in there uh, and face that way. So I do have the new cartridge in and it pretty much has stopped the drip. The job that this new retainer nut does, I think, is there's enough, just enough pressure to where sometimes especially after you've turned the faucet on, I think it pushes it up just enough to where it doesn't 100% seat. So you've got to kind of really push it down and then you'll put this nut in. This nut here comes off and I'll show you that guys when we install that stuff here in a second. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll get this off. Like I said, I had to pretty much destroy these things just because there was so much 
uh, calcium and hard mineral deposits. So you may have a real time getting this thing off. So this is what allows you to turn the handle. And if you can see up here on the original handle, it's keyed to that shape. So that will go in and it's a little tricky when you're reassembling it. But basically this slots in on here, uh, whatever direction you need. And then you just put that in like that and that allows you to turn the water on and off. So you'll remove that. You've got the nut uh, that goes onto here. And there, down in here there is a screw and what we'll need to do is take this part of the extender out and then I will run this nut down and through here and get it started. So we'll unscrew that with my hand so you can see. Then that lifts straight out and then you can see there's the screw down in there. And what we'll do now is we'll take this and get this started. A lot of times you can reverse it to make sure that the threads don't get crossed and then you can go in. This is still kind of relatively tight. So what I'm going to do, because I don't want to mess up these threads, is I'm going to turn this off so that I can concentrate on making sure that it goes in nice and straight and level. And uh, then I'll cut you back on as I'm, and I'll eventually use this tool to go ahead and get it as I go further down inside here. So you may have, like in my case, quite a bit of trouble getting this to start, especially if you've got a lot of buildup. What I ended up doing, I have some uh, calcium and rust remover type spray and it's actually called ZEP, Z-E-P, and it's the calcium remover kind. It's one of the better things that I've found. But even if you had uh, vinegar or uh, CLR or something like that, um, sometimes again, you, it's hard to get those threads cleaned out and these threads are so fine that it's hard to get them to start. So what I ended up doing was I took some of the uh, the ZEP and I just poured it in there and then let it sit for about 10-15 minutes then I came and I uh, got the water out and now I'm able to go ahead and uh, screw this in by hand. This should go in by hand um, so what I'll do is once it gets below I'll use this tool here and that will let me thread it in. You can kind of use it now but it doesn't it tends to want to walk out so I'm going to go ahead and I'll screw this thing down the rest of the way and uh, then what we'll do is we'll put this in and then we'll put in the stem and uh, the handle and the other stuff and, and get the handle back on. Hopefully that will take care of our problem for us. So now we've got this down in here to where it enough deep enough to where it won't want to walk out. So. It's just a matter of screwing this all the way down until it bottoms out and pushes and seals that cartridge up or, or locks that cartridge in. So I'll cut you back on when I'm done. So let me say one other thing about this real quick. It should turn very, very easily. You should not have to really get in there and force and press it down. Uh, Again, if you're having problems, it may be that it, it's just has uh, some mineral buildup. Uh, but this is, again, these are very, very fine threads. So any little bit of debris or blockage can cause it to, and especially since we're going plastic into copper, it won't rust out that way, but it does make it to where the copper will just destroy those threads. So just make sure that it goes easy. I'm getting to the end here, I think. All right, so we used our tool here and we've got that down in there. 
you'll you'll screw it down until it bottoms out and then just snug it up you don't want to over tighten it or you're gonna you know you'll tear up that plastic washer so the next step is to put in I don't know what they call it an adapter but basically this goes into the copper like that screws down in and then your uh, handle screws down on top of that once you have your stem uh, adapters back on so we'll go ahead and again we want to make sure that we are nice and straight and we're not crooked and then we, we go ahead and screw that in so I'm going to take some time to make sure that I don't destroy this in the process and uh, I'll get it started and then bring you back once I've got that down in there okay so we've got this started here and you can tell they're very 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 fine threads so again we'll just hand tighten them in and just it can be very uh, fiddly and so just take your time because what you don't want to do is get it going in crooked and forcing it because you can force it and you'll mess up the threads and you'll have to get another one of these parts So the next step is to put our stem extender, I guess, back in. And the cartridge has is shaped a certain way, so it's kind of keyed. You have its round up here and flat on the bottom. And on the inside, it will only sort of fit one way. Uh, so you can't necessarily put it on wrong. Uh, and then that, when you twist it, is what's going to open up your cartridge so when you put it in you just want to make sure you get it lined up and like I said it will only go in one way I did want to show you too and I, you won't really be able to see up on here but the tool on the inside there is some raised plastic nubs and you can use this tool to index it and then you can give this kind of a, a little bit of a tighten. So on the screw you'll notice that it has sort of this little odd shape to it and basically what that does the cartridge the top of the cartridge isn't threaded and when you go to put this in to hold that stem adapter in it basically kind of drills into the plastic. So again like with most of this stuff like with our adapter and our stem and, and everything you just want to get it to where it's tight and then give it just a little bit more to where it's snug so we'll go ahead get the screw and put that in now so again all we're doing is just putting it in there and tightening it um, the next step will be to put the handle, uh, and again I don't know what the names of these things are, but the next step will be to put this in and we'll want to, again this is keyed, so because the handle is keyed in a certain way, I've got this lined up to where the flat part is kind of facing this way and that way when I screw this on it will sit like this and then we'll be able to turn the faucet on and off and it will match sort of the angle of the other one so the next step now is to go ahead on our particular model to put the chrome nut on and again we're going metal onto plastic so I don't necessarily have to over tighten anything on there where it's snug and then you have the decorative ring here which just sits it just floats and it's held on uh, when you put this on it's held on just by the pressure
Now this part can be a little tricky too because as this screws down it lowers and you've got to make sure you're lined up with your handle so sometimes you got to kind of wiggle this a little bit and to get it to, to seat. So I'm going to struggle with that and then I'll, once I get it on I'll, I'll uh, and get it secured I'll show you guys the final product.